Well, for more on the tariff fallout and the political deadlock on Capitol Hill, I'm joined now by Republican strategist Ron Bonjean. So, Ron, as you saw there, these California wine exporters are having trouble with the market in China because of the president's tariffs and retaliation from China. Is the president right to stand firm with his trade war? I think ex I think uh, that his base absolutely wants him to stand firm. You know, con the Republicans who voted for him in the last election want him to change the way things are done, and they feel that China is taking advantage of the United States, and he wants a level playing field. I get why he's fighting for that, and there's obviously going to be uh, issues with that war. You are going to have casualties on both sides. The key is to make sure that you have some type of resolution on what happens before 2020 really kicks in. I think he needs a win there, just like he's winning in Mexico. But the president is threatening to impose even more tariffs mm -hmm. on China if he doesn't get what he wants out of the talks with Beijing. At what point does the cost become too much, as you say, with 2020 looming? Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, look at the leverage that he put on Mexico, and they caved within a week or so. You know, China's a very di different and complex uh, uh, country in terms of the amount of trade we do with, uh, deal with, but we also deal with billions of dollars of trade with Mexico. The, Trump looks at it, the more leverage that he can put on, uh, the more he can put on the country regarding tariffs, the more leverage he's going to have in negotiations. And I don't think China wants to go this far either. I think they're going to both want it out at some point. Well, turning to Capitol Hill, and you're a veteran there, Ron, today there was a vote in the House to make it easier, essentially, to take the White House to court to get hold of these Demo documents that Democrats want on the Mueller inquiry. Isn't it just total deadlock in Congress right now? It is, and that's not good for Congress. I mean, Democrats took over the House of Representatives, and they promised to bring change the way they see fit. Instead, they've turned this into an investigative machine against the president, and that plays right into Trump's hands. He's actually thriving on these investigations and these passage of votes because he's able to play it off as if it's a conspiracy, that the deep state and the establishment is trying to take him down, and that his voters love the fact that he's outside hitting away at that. But Ron, the president also said that he was a deal maker, that he was going to be someone who could break the deadlock. Doesn't this just show that he's a politician like everyone but else? Isn't that a risk? But when you see wins like the dead, with like the uh, war with the potential trade war with Mexico, when you see a win like that, you think he's putting points on the board. Well, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats are passing bills out of the House, few and far between. They languish in the Senate, and he has offered to do deals with them if they would drop their investigations. And they haven't just thus far yet. And she has a very liberal wing to, uh, uh, to appease right now. Ron Bonjean, thank you so much for that analysis. Thank you. Now, was Kim Jong-un's half-brother a CIA informer? That's the question being asked today after two reports suggest that is indeed the case. Today, President Trump commented on the news while talking about his ongoing correspondence with Kim Jong-un. Uh, I see that, and I just received a beautiful letter from Kim Jong-un. And I think the relationship is very well, but I appreciated the letter. I saw the information about the CIA with respect to his uh, brother or half-brother, and I would tell him that would not happen under my, under my auspices, that's for sure. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let that happen under my auspices.